Hello and welcome. In this video, I want to talk about this new feature that became available in version 42 called Register Material Consumption as Complete and Added Dimensions on the Production Floor Execution Interface. A similar feature was available for non-WMS item and this feature right here should work for advanced warehouse item. Please note that even though in feature management workspace this feature is not marked as in preview, if we'll check the documentation, the registered material consumption is marked as preview feature as of November 11, 2024. So what is the intent of this feature? Well, there are kind of two components to it. The first one is that we have a new screen on our production execution interface called truck components, the screen right here. And this screen allows us to register batch and serial numbers against the components that we are consuming into our production order. And the second part is that we now have this adjust material button that allows us to basically create certain adjustments to the components that we have already consumed. So let's take a look. So here I'm starting with a new production order. It's still in created state. Few things here. If we look at the bill of material, it has two components, U201, which is a batch controlled item, advanced warehouse, and then U202 right here. This is a serial control advanced warehouse turned on. Another thing that I did for my finished good item U100 right here is that I turned on auto batch generation. The system automatically assigned batch based on the number sequence. So I have done it on purpose and you will see later on why I did that. So let's just go quickly through the standard things of scheduling the production order. Done. And releasing it to our terminal. Status is released. Now let's go and switch gears and act as operator of a machine on which that production job has been scheduled. So here's my production floor execution interface. Let me log in. I see this production job for a production order that ends with 263. And let's just go through the motions of starting this job. So I'm going to click on start. This screen is not changed. It's basically as it was before. So I have quantity of two that I'm planning to produce and I'm going to start quantity of two. So now my job has been started. You see that requested quantities to started quantities to. Now I'll select my job and you may see on the right hand side, I have configured my interface to have these two new buttons. One is called truck components and another one is called adjust material. So let's take a look first at the truck components button. Click on that. Here the system is expecting us to scan certain things. Well, first, it's asking us to scan a batch number of the finished good. The finished good is batch controlled item and we need to associate a batch number to it. So I'm going to come back to my production order. And that's why I had this batch number right here generated earlier because I needed to complete component tracking. Let's go back to our UI. And here I will enter that batch number of my finished good. Press enter. You see that it's a successful and on the top pane where it shows my finished good U100, it now shows that batch number that was assigned to that production order. Now, even though it's not that clear here, the system is expecting us to start scanning batch and serial numbers of our components. Remember the first component, which is in the bottom pane right here, U201, is a batch control item. And I have two batches on hand that I can use. So let me enter the first one. It's called B100. So the system now says progress two of two. That means that the two quantities that we need to consume of that batch controlled component were assigned to the single batch B100 that I have entered. I can confirm that by clicking on this adjust components button. You'll see that it has B100 batch that I've just scanned or entered and the plant consumption is two. Let me click on OK to come back. What about if I entered second batch, for example, B200, which is a second batch that I also have on hand. The system shows me that success message again, but the interesting thing that happens here is if we click adjust components screen again, you see that I have 
registered the second batch B200, but there's no plant consumption against it. So I can change that. And let's say I want to split quantity of two between these two batches. So first I will adjust first line for B100 batch to one. And then I will adjust the second batch quantity to one as well. So this way I'm planning to consume one each from both of these batches. I can continue scanning batches here. So for example, I can scan a different batch that does not exist. So for example, wrong batch and I'm going to press on enter. You see the system just registers that batch even though it doesn't exist but the plant consumption here is zero. So I think this is an interesting behavior where validation doesn't really happen here. Any value can be scanned and registered on this screen. So I think that was done by design. So right now I have three associations created. Let me just click on OK. Now I need to do a similar thing for my second component U202 which is a serial controlled. So I'm going to select it in my screen. You see that the progress is zero of two and that's where I start scanning serial numbers now. So S302 is my first serial number. Enter. You see that it has registered it successfully. Now I have to click on it again. I think this is a UI bug, but I think it should have remained on the second component that I have selected. But now I need to kind of click back on it because it jumped back to the first record. I think it will be addressed with quality updates. So I'm going to select my second component again, and I'm going to enter the second serial number as 303. So I have registered as well. I'm going to select my second component here as well. And I'll show you another interesting feature is I'm going to enter a serial number that was already associated to a different production order. So this serial number is S301. And when I do that, you see that the system says serial number 301 is already associated to a lot. So it does not allow me registration. It's an interesting behavior where if I enter a completely wrong batch or serial number, the value will be accepted. But if I enter a valid serial number that is associated with a different production order, I will get an error message. So just keep that in mind. I'm going to close these messages. Now to review my associations, I'm going to select the component and click on adjust components button again. So here you see that I have one each register against two of my serial numbers. So that's the difference in behavior between the batch number scanning when the entire quantity was allocated to the single batch number, assuming that it had sufficient quantity, and a serial number scanning when a single serial number is associated with only a single item. I can also go and register a wrong number here. So for example, serial number, enter again. Similarly to batch, the system just takes that invalid serial number and registers it. But what I can do here is that I can adjust that and delete that line. Let's say I have scanned a wrong barcode that is not a serial number. I can go to that screen and I can click on reset link. It's going to give me that. This will unlink all selected components. Would you like to continue? I'm going to say yes. And now that third line that I have registered against wrong serial number has been deleted. Click on OK. All right. So we have completed batch and serial number associations. I'm going to click on OK. And the question is, how will it go and flow into my production order consumption, right? So what I'll do next is I will go and report progress. In here, the system is saying, well, are you reporting progress against batch number that we already entered? I'm going to say yes. And in here, I will say I report the progress of two good quantities of our finished good. I'm going to keep my status as in progress and I'm going to click on report progress. Operation has been completed. And now let's go back to the production order and see what type of journals have been created in the background. So here's my production order. I will click on view and all journals. You see here I have two posted journals, one for the job card to register my actual run times. And the second journal is to report the two Finish good items as finished. I can click on lines and you will see that it added my U100 finished good in quantity of two into designated warehouse and location that is associated with my resource. But you may notice that there is no picking list journal that has been either posted or neither created. And that was done intentionally, right? I have configured my production or defaults to never generate picking list 
when I report my progress on operations or when a report is finished. But now we need to kind of use that tracked associations to generate a picking list. So what I'll do now is I'll go back to my production order and I'll show you a new screen that has been added. It's called track components. And again, similar layout to what we have seen in our interface. On the top pane, we see the finished good. And on the bottom pane, we see the bill of material line items. You may notice that neither location, license plate, batch number, single numbers are populated. That is because those are just the bomb lines. But in order to see my associations, I will click on the view associations button right here. In here, I see all those registrations that I have done on the bottom. Let's just look at the top pane first. Here, I see that this is for specific batch numbers. So if, for example, your production order has multiple finished good batch numbers, you can click on create right here and you can basically include the same item under a different batch. But because all two quantities of my finished good will be associated to a single batch number. I will not do that. I'm going to click on remove. Another thing I can do is I can create a report as finished journal from this line as well by clicking on this report as finished. But because I've already done it from my interface, because I'll let operators do that, I do not need to do that here. But now let's take a look at my components on the bottom. What I can do here is I can create a new association by clicking on, on create. That's what we already done on the interface. I can remove the existing association, which we already done for our wrong batch number or wrong serial number, for example. I can also click on this adjust consumption button and it will do two things. It will pick the materials that are listed in the grid below and it will also generate a new picking list. Keep in mind that the picking will also automatically happen. Instead, what I'll do is I'll just gonna do the pick of the components that were associated on the interface by clicking on the pick. Components associations are picked successfully. You can see the picked quantities got populated. The line with the wrong batch that had zero consumption quantity did not have any picked quantities. And just to confirm that we indeed picked those components, I navigate back to my production order, click on my bomb, and go inventory transactions. So this is my batch control item. If you look at the dimensions, we see that correct batches were populated. And based on the batches, the system derived actually the picking locations. So two batches were actually located in two different locations. And also for the license plate control location, which is at floor 001 location, the system derived a license plate based on the batch number that we have scanned on the interface. So quite handy functionality where based on a single dimension, a batch number, the system has derived all the required dimensions such as uh, warehouse, location, and license plate. And if we go back and check our serialized product, go to inventory transactions. In a similar fashion, we see that there are two lines that were picked and they were against two different serial numbers. Serial number 302 was picked from bulk 001 location, which is non-LP location. And then serial number S303 was picked from floor 001 location against the license plate 711. I think this is quite useful if uh, you are working in scenarios where you need to back flash material consumption based on the information, based on registrations that were created on our shop floor execution interface. Let's go back. Interestingly though, if you look and just trying to understand how these pick transactions were generated, they were not done via the pick list journal because if I go back to my production journals you see that the number of journals are still two and we do not see a separate picking list journal so those pick transactions were generated basically from the bill of material line based on those associations and another thing that i wanted to show you here let me just go back to this screen right here is about adjusting material consumption and make material reservations so apparently there is a new button here and it can be available from three different places. Report scrap, report progress, and on the toolbar on the right. So I have added this new material adjustment button on the toolbar on the right. Let's just go back to our interface. You can see it right here. But what I notice is that I do not see it on the report progress or report scrap screens, for example. If I look at this, I can see my batch number and I see the good quantity, let's say one, but nowhere here I see adjust material button. So not sure if it's missing or I'm missing some configuration. I've checked configuration for my floor execution interface, but I have not seen where I can add it. 
So let me just go back. But I was able to add it to my primary screen right here. Here is this adjustment shield button. And the only thing that I'll say here is that all it does, it just goes and generates a new pick and list journal. So this is a button that can be used to adjust our consumption by generating a new pick and list journal. So let me just click on that. Here it shows us the two bomb lines. And as soon as I did that action, if I go back to my production order and refresh the screen, you see that the system has created a new pick and list journal, right? It's not posted. If we look at the lines, we will see our two bomb lines, but all the dimensions such as the batch, serial numbers, locations are blank. So it doesn't really read from the truck associations that we have created, which I felt could have been useful. All it does is saying, all right, so I'm gonna create all the lines for your components, and then you tell me what the quantities and what dimensions for each should be. So if I go back to my execution, that is where I can go and I specify the consumption, let's say one, for example, here, and that's where I can go and I can enter dimensions for a new pick and list journal. But if I click on post, that's when the system will go and post the journal. But if I click on cancel, which I'll do right now and go back to my screens, go back and refresh it, you see that the speaking list disappears. So in my experience, this adjust material button creates a brand new picking list journal that just copies the bomb lines to it and allows us to specify the quantity and dimensions for each of the components. It doesn't do anything else. Overall, I feel that this truck components functionality is quite useful. As you have seen, we were able to create multiple associations on the interface and then use those associations to quickly generate pick inventory transaction for our components. Overall, I think it's another improvement for the production floor execution interface. Face. That is all for this video. I hope you found it useful. Until the next time, take care.